Hello there, great to see you. Today I want to share with you the two most common ways to create delay throws in your mix to add depth and interest to a vocal. So what's so cool about delay throws? Well, using a delay throw effect is a great way to extend a vocal at the end of a line or at the end of a phrase. That would otherwise make it seem like the energy has fallen flat or there's nothing seeming to be happening that continues the focal point for the listener. A delay throw introduces depth and movement and this can help the vocal sound more dynamic and interesting. And by using a mono delay, you can generate a front back perspective or by using a stereo delay, you can introduce a fresh sense of width, all of which enhances the overall listening experience for the audience. There are two main ways to create a delay throw I'll get to those in a minute. But first, there are just a couple of things to do before you start. You need to make sure that you know the tempo of the song and you need to input that into your DAW session and that will ensure that all your repeats stay timed to the track. Secondly, listen through to the mix without stopping to get a sense of some suitable places to add a throw, such as vocal gaps, and at the ends of lines, or just to highlight specific words. By holding back the urge to press stop when you're listening through to the track, you are retaining your objectivity for the use of delay throws as, they, as the song plays through from start to finish. The last thing you want to do is overuse them. Next, think about the quality of the delay, its sonic profile. A common sound in rock or pop music is to use some sort of distorted delay, like a bandpass sound where you cut some of the highs, cut some of the lows and you create this telephonic effect. So there are two main ways to create delay throws. The first is by duplicating the original audio track and cutting out the words or phrases that you want to apply the delay to and then you just add a delay plugin to that track and fade it up as necessary. Or the second way is to set up an auxiliary channel with an automated send from the original dry vocal track. I'll show you how to do the duplicated track method in a second, but in this session, I've used the automated send method. So let me show you how I did that. So this is a track called Somehow I'll Survive by the artist called Roger Ricks. And it's taken from my classic rock mixing masterclass. You take a look at the lead vocal here in the verse, which is this track here. I'm showing you the automation lane where you can see that I've written in some automation moves with, re with regard to the send to the delay track. The delay track is down here at the bottom of my session and it is a vocal delay PP and I'm using Echo Boy, a really popular delay time for delay throws in rock and pop music is a quarter note and that's what you can see here. In this instance I'm using a dual echo and you can see that I'm using a telephone style within Echo Boy. I've got high cut dialed in and I've got some low cut dialed in and I've also got some feedback. Feedback is where you can dial in the correct amount of uh, repeats that you want to hear. It's all the way up fully wet because this is a effect plugin applied to a auxiliary track and most importantly it is set to track the tempo of the song. Now I decided to choose a transition point here to apply this delay throw. It's where I heard it in my mind's ear when I listened through to this track from start to finish. Let me just play this for you. It's the transition point between verse going into the chorus. So it's quite, it's not really in your face and that's not how I like to do delay throws. I like them to be quite subliminal and in the distance, in the background, because I feel as though that creates more of a front back perspective at that point in the mix. That doesn't mean to say that's how you have to uh, level your delays. You can have them as loud as you want. It's completely up to you. It's your track, it's your mix. 
uh, but that's just how I choose to do it, how it sounds correct to me. The second place is, uh, is here, again, going through the second transition. So let's just take a listen to that. solo it so you can hear it I'm gonna die. okay so the way I've done that is by automating the send and this is the key to this method is you automate the send so that the amount of signal that you're sending to your delay track and you fade it up and you fade it out and I'm doing that using this send here which is uh, using a bus called the delay vocal PP uh, PP stands for ping pong normally, but I didn't use ping pong in this instance. So let's have a look at that. I'm gonna die. Okay, so it's just a matter of activating your automation for the send fader and uh, riding it either with a fader if you have one or with your mouse if you haven't. Now, sometimes what can happen with delay repeats is that the delays themselves can feel as though they're standing out a little bit too much. And it's not necessarily a level thing. It's more down to the way that the plugin has generated the delays. And a great thing to do with delays to soften the edges, as I often refer to it as doing, is by using a reverb. Let me show you that. So back down to our vocal delay PP track here, you can see there's Echo Boy. OK, I'm also applying a send from the delay return here, which is using the bus called Reverb Vocal 2. And Reverb Vocal 2, in this instance, I was using the Lexicon 480 set to medium random hall. So let's play across that section of vocal again. I'll leave the reverb in and then I'll take the reverb out and see if you can hear a difference. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. And this medium random hall is a modulated reverb, so it's also adding some movement. It's very subtle. Uh, let me see if I can make it sound a little bit more obvious. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. So you can hear that the reverb just takes it to another level of texture. It's a really great thing to play around with to push that vocal or that delayed vocal back in the mix for, for a more ghostly sound. So that method there that I've shown you is based on a console workflow method and arguably it's the most common method that's uh, that's used it's a great option it's really flexible because it allows you to send different tracks to the delay using reverb on the delays like that is a great way to just give you a more smooth result something less obvious it all depends on what it is that you want from that uh, particular delay throw at that point in the mix so the next method is a duplicated track method so this works for um, a, a track or a part of a track that you want to specifically apply a delay to and you don't have any intention of applying that delay to any other track in your mix. Let me show you what I mean. Let's just listen to what we've got here in solo. There's no way I'm gonna die. And in the mix. Can you hear how the vocal just just kind of stops and it can be really nice to extend vocals using delay throws just to keep the focal point of the listener on the vocal as it transitions from verse to chorus. So how would we do that with the duplicated track method? In Pro Tools it's just a matter of right clicking and selecting duplicate and making sure that the active playlist is ticked don't particularly need alternate playlists. I don't want automation, but I will keep inserts. Don't want markers. I don't want sends. 
but I will keep group assignments. And so duplicated track has been created. Uh, I'm just going to trim this up and I'm going to just color it slightly differently for the sake of the video. And so we have just a duplication, but without any of the um, effect sends instantiated. There's no way I'm gonna die. Okay, dry sounding vocal. So what do we need to do here? Well, we just need to add Echo Boy. And here's where you can choose whether you want to keep it mono with the track. Uh, it's a mono vocal track or whether you want to turn it into a stereo track. I'm going to go with that. If you want to stick with mono, that's perfectly fine because what you can do there is that you can pan this channel to uh, one side or the other, whatever degree you want to pan it to have the effect coming in just on one side rather than just generally across both channels. So you can get really creative with delays like this. But I want to create that dual echo. I want to bring in some a low cut and a high cut and it's time to the tempo of the track. I'm going to add some saturation just to add a little bit of grit to the repeat. And then you'll notice that in the style box here, it's set to memory man. So let's run with that. Let's see what that one sounds like. Also, uh, at the moment, it's defaulted to a quarter note on uh, one side and an eighth on the opposite. And I want them both to be a quarter note. Video editing Sarah here. Just to clarify why I'm using a dual echo delay here, really for the type of delay I'm using in this example, a single echo would be perfectly fine. But the session I'm using from the masterclass is taken out of context slightly so you can't see how I got to this point. So apologies for any confusion. Let's get on with the rest of the video. So let's see what that sounds like. There's no way I'm gonna die. So you can hear how that's changed the quality of the uh, of the dry track. It's now gone to a quite a, a muffled sound, which is great for uh, delay throws. It's great for pushing them back in the mix. But the thing is, I don't want that whole phrase to use that in the throw. I just want the last word. What I also want is I want more of an echo to it. I want to hear more repeats. This is where your feedback control comes in. So you can hear there that that's where we start to get into the territory that we had with the automated send and return method. So I'm going to keep that. And then let's have a look at the style here. How do we want this echo to sound? I like, as I've said, I like that dull band passed sound. We've got that here with uh, the memory man. Let's just have a look and uh, compare that then with the telephone. That's actually got a little bit more uh, clarity to it. It's got a lot more focus in that sort of 1 to 2K area. So I think that's going to help give it feel as though it's a little bit more separated in the track. So I am going to stick with the telephone style in this case. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to trim this phrase down to the selected part of that phrase that I want to actually repeat. And it's the end. It's the last part of the phrase there. So you just zoom in, you come in and let's cut the uh, the first part of the word off. Let's put a nice kind of fade at the beginning and the end. And let's listen to that. Let's listen to it in the mix. Okay. Let me just put that up in level so you can hear it a little bit clearer. Okay, great. I think I want a few more repeats, actually. So I want the repeats, to, the echoes to keep returning until the chorus starts. Still not sounding quite right, though. What I think I need to do is perhaps maybe just address the uh, size of this track and just cut the more of the start of the word off. It's 
bit loud at the moment. I'm just going to bring that down. It's not quite right. And what I'm hearing is that reverb, I think, is going to help me here. And it's going to soften the obviousness of this, uh, this particular repeat. Let's take uh, the reverb vocal 2 and let's try adding some reverb to this delay. I'm going to solo it. So this is it dry. And now with reverb. It's just extending those repeats and just adding like a cloud around the delays. Let's hear that in the track. Something else you can do here is where you can get really creative with where these repeats happen in terms of their rhythm in the playback of the track. What I often do, I'll actually move it along the grid so that it keeps in time with the track, but it just happens later. Let's see what that sounds like. In Pro Tools, what I do there is I'll just go to grid and the grid is set up here to a 16th note and I'll just take that clip and just move it along and snap it to the grid. See what that sounds like. So you can really control where these delays happen. It does sound loud now, so I'm going to bring that down, see what that sounds like. Okay, so that's the duplicated track method and you can really get creative when you start thinking about the grid and using different divisions to create different timings of your repeats. So I'm just going to put that back to where it was and if we just have a look at where we started with the original method. So this is the automated send method. I were to just uh, try and replicate what's happening there. See if I can get the two sounding close to identical. Pull this reverb down a touch. Let's uh, remind ourselves what the automated send version sounds like. And now the duplicated track version. Okay, pretty similar. It just that fade a little bit. What I was hearing there is the, the first sort of consonant or syllable of that last word. Because every time you've got a consonant or a hard transient in a, in a vocal, then that will be picked up by the delay and sound more obvious and get repeated than a, a sustaining sound would, like a vowel sound. So I wanted to take that first syllable off so that it is just the sus sustained vowel sound of that word that's being repeated. And that gives the feeling of the repeats coming up underneath the dry vocal and then taking on and carrying it on a little bit further, extending it without drawing too much attention to itself. And the reverb is helping to smooth that effect out as well. You can experiment with this duplicated track method. You, could, you don't necessarily need all the plugins that has been copied down to that track from the original track. Um, you can take those out and really play around with the texture and the quality of that copied word to get some really interesting flavours to your delay throws. Okay, that's it for this video. Today I've shown you the two main methods for creating delay throws using the duplicated track and also using the automated send and return. And I've also shown you how to soften the edges of a delay by using reverb on the delay returns. And that gives you that more ghostly laid back or distant sounding repeats that can often blend better in mixes. So 
I hope you found that useful. If you have any questions or comments, leave them under the video and don't forget to like and share the video if you think it will help others. If you like the sound of the track that I've used today and you'd like to mix it for yourself, then I'll put a link in the description to my classic rock mixing masterclass. And if you want to learn more about delay, then watch this video on screen now, introducing you to delay and explaining the timings of slapback, short, medium and long delays. So that's all from me and I'll see you in the next video.